In this video, Big Alice Evis, co-founder of the Mongol Motorcycle Club, tells of his violent battles, brutal arrests, and glorious redemption. If you want Al to pray for you directly, listen until the end of this heart-pounding clip. My name is Big Alice Evis. I'm the co-founder of the Mongol Nation. You know, God is so good, He'll let you be what you want, good or bad. He's going to let you do it because you make your own decision. God didn't make no robots. I used methadone, Darvon ends, you name it, I used it. I couldn't get off heroin until I made my commitment again with Jesus Christ. How bad was kicking? Well, the one time I kicked in the home, I was on the floor kicking, vomiting, and I was just on heroin, just like a dog, because I had a dealer's habit. I knew somebody, and they said, here, Alan, you know, we're going to give you this. They'd give you so much to sell, and so much is yours. So, hey, that's fine. Every morning you get up, you got a free one. And if it's any good, people are calling you, hey, can I, but yeah, come $20. I did other things. Some things I can't talk about, naturally, but I did other things. I collected money. I remember I took some guys to Vegas with me, and this guy with money, and I was in the house talking to me, a big smile about him, and he had a big thing full of jewelry right there. And I looked at it, and he closed the box on me and pulled it towards him. And I started laughing. And I go, I didn't come for jewelry. You own over a hundred grand. I said, you better pay now or give us something, or you can do it when you come back. And the guy asked me, well, where am I going? I said, you're going to the hospital, man. That's a hundred grand. See them guys sitting on the couch? Them and me are going to beat you senseless. So, you know, we took away a brand new Mercedes. We took it and I told him, if you call the cops, one of us is coming back and it ain't we're going to get you and your family. He didn't call and we kept that car for a long time. But what was your position in the club? Well, Fred, and I was a sergeant of arms, and I was a national sergeant of arms. And I, I had, I would do stuff. You know, we had a lot of good guys in the club, a lot of guys, you know, some of the guys even worked, had jobs, you know what I mean? And that had families that they loved, and, you know, and then some guys try to, I had guys that were just with me that would do stuff. They weren't afraid. I got a tattoo here of my compadre Melo. He was not afraid when uh, they broke my head open with a lock and chain. And I, uh, my face was covered with blood. And, and Melo came next to me and she said, are you all right, compa? I said, I'm all right, compa. And he grabbed one guy and he had this big old knife. He had one like this, just like this. And he grabbed the guy by the shoulder and hit him in the face and head right here. Then he grabbed another guy and did the same thing. And he goes, we're better than even, compa. And I said, yeah, we're better than even. And that day I pulled some guy's eye out. And we were fighting. Anyway, we were in a bar first and this, these guys got this girl and, and then I went and butted in and I took the girl from them, gave them to my brothers. My brothers did worse. They had her dancing naked. The guy goes, oh man, look what you had, uh, let's leave. So we left, you know, the guys in the bar wanted a fight. And I told them, you ain't got a chance. They wanted a fight because it was just me. But when all the brothers came in, they were just like, oh. And they went to one corner. So we left, I led the pack out of there. And we were past the one store, and then we kept going, and we got to a bridge. So I pulled over the bridge, went down, and said, 
set of guards here on top of the bridge. And so I took, I, I had taken uh, some LSD, I think it was, or mushrooms, and I took methadone and I shot heroin. So I'm sitting in the river with my boots on in the water loaded with two young girls. And I'm just happy as could be, just happy. And all of a sudden this guy comes and says, hey, so-and-so stole the girl they wanted to so They almost started a fight. I said, forget it. Just, you know, enjoy. come on, we're right here. And then the guy that did it, my brother from San Diego, he came and he told me, hey, Al, look what they did, and he turned around and they had cut his, cut off part of the patch, the end. So I said, let's go. So the police only let a few of us in and stopped it. And then we ended up fighting. Everybody was trying to get us. They were everywhere. And we're fighting, we're fighting, we're fighting. And then this big old guy, I don't know who he was. They say he was H.A., I don't know. But after I had pulled this guy's eye out and they had broke my head open and I had broke some van door off and pulled some guys out that were trying to escape. The police came and they got me. And they said, don't move this. I said, hey, I raised my hands. Yeah, I don't want no trouble. And the big guy said, F you. And I looked at him and I put my hand out and when I hit him, I hit him in the nose and ripped his nose, but he went flying and hit the ground. And the cop hit me in the face with a stick and then I hit him with the left and dropped him and then that's when the police came down and I just raised my hand and said listen listen I don't want no trouble it's just a so they want to get us out of there because there was so many fighting so we got out of there we ended up going to one one hospital where all these guys we had stabbed I had stabbed a whole bunch of guys I pulled the guys, because they were jumping on me. Get them, get them, I was real big at that time. So they were jumping on me and I was stabbing them. You know, so anyway, they were in line. There was a big old line. A brother of mine, Roger, I'm gonna say his name, he don't care. But they tried to cut his testicles off and he had a big cut in his leg. So he was limping, so it was me and Roger, blood coming down my face, the cops throw us in a cop car and take us to a hospital. We get to this one hospital, nobody's there. And so um, they, they separate us. And so I'm trying to get out this little, this little window, I can't get out. And so the, the doctor comes and he's sewing up my head, see the bump right here? Yeah. He's sewing up my head and I'm looking at him and he goes, hey, what's the matter with you guys? Don't you feel any pain? I go, yeah, doc, it hurts, it hurts. Give me, give me a shot. Morphine, that's what I was looking for. They came home on morphine. They were hooked on morphine. And they were using heroin to get off it. So anyway, they sold my, my head. I got Roger, and we got in a truck with another brother. And we started going. And the police had blocked, you couldn't get on the freeway. And they were blocked and they said, I said, hey, let us get on the freeway. He said, no, you can't go. The Mongols are going through. So they grabbed me and stuck me out the window because I had a Mongol uh, haircut. And they said, let them through. So we went and we got off where our, our, we had a brother named Freddie. Rest in peace. Freddie was a karate guy, so he said, and he had a broken jaw. But anyway, he was trying to karate some people. They broke his jaw again. But he was in this hospital with all these guys that were against us. But we went to the front of the line, Gorse Freddy. They told us we went in there and the cops were in there with him with the doctor. They go, you all right, Freddy? He said, I'm all right, brother, I'm all right. He said, all right, me and Roger were there. So he said, okay, Freddy. So then I looked at the doctor and I told him, nothing better happen to this guy. You understand me? I'll be back. And the cops told me, are you threatening? I said, I didn't threaten him, I told him the truth. So man, this guy, I'm coming back. 
But what I was, I am not, and I'll never be, and he's trying to save you. I don't care if you're an addict, I don't care if you're an alcoholic, I don't care what biker, one percenter, I don't care what you are. You know, I don't care if you're under undercover Christian. You gotta come to the light. Time's short. That's all I got. Time is short. You know, I see my kids. Man, I ruined them. So many of them. I ruined some of my grandkids, my great grand. They're, I ruined them. I ruined them. I want to be like you, Grandpa. Go to church. No, not that one. The other one. I want to be like you, Grandpa. And inside of me, it hurts so much because I pray that they never come close to what I was. That they'll never know what it is I did. All I can do is pray. That's my, if you need prayer, call me, call me. That's my gift from God. If you need prayer, if you're in the area, you need deliverance, call me, call me. And I will do what God would have me do, to show up.